Today is Monday, December the 23rd, and we can see that the volume was still reasonably good. And don't forget, this is when people are starting to sell um, to balance their books. A lot of people, day traders, um, like to make sure that their books are zero at the beginning of the year. It makes ta filing taxes simpler. And of course, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, selling just to capture some losses to offset some gains. And there certainly have been a lot of gains for people this year, so they're going to try to capture their losses for sure. And uh, you know, if you're a day trader and you're registered with the IRS as a trader, that's a particular designation then you can sell on the 31st of December and buy on the 1st of July. That's not so according to the washout rule uh, if you're just an ordinary investor. So if you want to, to be, if you want to take advantage of um, a lot of things that traders can, I mean, if that is your main profession, that's what you do as your job, you should register with the IRS as a trader. And there is a particular form that you need to fill out to do that. Anyways, the market, the Dow opened and then just went flat. The Nasdaq dropped, moved up. The S&P dropped, moved up, moved down. So it was a pretty nothing day. And uh, the advances and decliners were, I mean, identical. Identical to within a tenth of a percent of each other, which means that the market breadth, which hasn't been updated yet is the time of making this video, but it's just not going to move. It's been there now for four days, not moving. It really does need to get up to the overbought line, and and this is just coiling. This is just building up. Uh, is it building up to break through where money pours into the market? That would have happened last week or the week before. That's not going to happen now. Um, the SPX. Let's look at the SPX. We created a new. We did not create a new, well. Maybe we did create a new high, but. Pretty, uh, new closing high we did. We can move our closing high now up to there. Very small number. We still have a gap below there to fill. Um, we're still above this trend line. Uh, let's draw some Fibonacci's when we go into next year because there's not going to be anything Fibonacci related that's going to happen in the next four days or whatever it is of trading. Apple up almost five dollars and that was because one of the big analysts raised their target to the highest level um, that anyone has out there I forget what it is but you ought to look it up um, right at the end of this we'll look it up on tip ranks for those who are still watching so we have a new closing high and the volume was not so bad um, it wasn't anything like the institutions were buying but we did have a lot of um, uh, average sellers uh, extending their buy or increasing their positive uh, bullish options into Apple. Home Depot, right, let's go Caterpillar. Caterpillar, uh, a nice up day, pulled off of its high, um, but still finished higher than the day before by 93 cents. So that's a good sign. Same type of volume as we saw for Apple. Uh, not quite the 20 day moving average. Remember, our SMIs are both starting to creep up. Let's take a look at the Apple SMIs while we're at it, because I don't think we ever applied those. We're just thinking that Apple is just plain bullish. Um, and Apple started to reach um, a momentum turn because it had gotten too high in the fast line, but the slow line is still ticking back up. And it could tick up a few more days, but then both of them are due for a little bit of a downturn. And Apple always, the downturn doesn't have to be that high. Look how much the SMI can change, but how little the price can change overall. Um, in fact, look at this one. That was an even steeper drop. And we only had a drop of uh, 214 to uh, 173. I mean, sizable enough, but... Um, it just it's just a cycle right look at the cycles that we have in apple like every other stock there are cycles you just have to learn them and trade them uh home depot uh, down a dollar 98 and i did say something on twitter that this was a bearish engulfing candle but i said the volume was pathetic at the time that i posted it at two o'clock there was this much volume 
We have double the volume now, but it's still insignificant. There's no reason to get out of any positions. Um, you know, my profits in Home Depot were probably they were they were halved because they're long auction spreads. They're middle of their end of January and their end of March, so they're going to be slow to develop unless there's a very fast move. But there's slow movement in Home Depot, so the uh, delta is fairly slow. Uh, fairly low in these um, vertical spreads. So that's um, a trade that's just going to take its time. Uh, but I still believe uh, we've got some interest in heading up through to this thin cloud and make it, maybe breaking through it. Not this year, because I don't see the type of gains that are going to take us out to December. Thir well, December 31st does bring us out to this thin part of the cloud. Look at that. So it's possible that we end up through this cloud or at the tip at the bottom of this cloud on the 31st of December. AT&T, damn I hate that alert. AT&T, um, not an engulfing candle because the top and the bottom don't engulf the previous day. Um, but a little bit of a pullback and that's because the fast moving SMI has been starting to turn down and we knew that was going to happen. We expected that but the slow moving SMI is still moving up. So there's no reason to sell this because the dividend is coming up, ex-dividend on January the 9th. WDC, look at that, broke right through the gap. That is very powerful. Took one, two, three days to go through the gap, but now we have hit 38.2% and pulled off of it. Also reached this high. So we want to set an alert here, create an alert when it crosses that level which is the 138.2%, and that's going to be an opportunity for us to, uh, to take a position, because then we're going to be moving back up to this 6531. We also have another gap down here, but, you know, it could be leaving that gap um, in the dust for some time. WHR down a dollar, come on, WHR down a dollar 93 on insignificant pathetic nothing volume don't give that any thought but the SMIs are still not finished bottoming out here they're gonna get down to what well, where are the previous lows down here 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 so they're all in this area all between here and here so we've got at least this much to go in the uh, fast moving SMI we could be coming down to uh, 68.1 percent right around 140 before we get a bounce in WHR and that's a stock that long term I'd like to have if the economy stays this way uh, people are going to do house renovations they're going to buy new houses they're going to move but there is some concern with the election coming up you know and the economy is good for me and you because we're traders the economy is not good for everybody and there's a number of charts that are showing that the middle class feels um, a little more worried than they, they, they did two years ago. These tax cuts really haven't helped them. They've helped corporations who have hired people, wonderful, um, but the jobs haven't been that good and the salaries haven't gone up. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. The other one that we want to talk about is SHOP for Andy. And SHOP has still got its SMI moving down and that's the only thing that I'm looking at. But we do have, and we do have the um, slower moving SMI also starting to move down. So I think that that might be all she wrote for SHOP, this 178.6% on a Fibonacci extension. Um, look at the video to see where those points were drawn. There was a video done last Monday. Um, but this is what you want to be watching. Now we've had fake pullbacks before, right here in the SMI pullback and then up. Here, pullback, up. Up, down and then back up again. This could very well turn around and leave the slower moving SMI plateauing, which it can do. I mean, look at how long that SMI was flat back here while the stock, you know, the uh, faster SMI did this. But in the meantime, the stock was moving up. There were just little pullbacks, which were buy the dip opportunities. Uh, that could be happening here. And if that's the case, if we get a two-day reversal in this, then I would suggest that we are coming into another one of these periods here. And if you go back here, you could even say from this point here, February of this year, 
all the way through to June, in fact, all the way through the year to August, with this exception, you had this flat, slower moving SMI that gave the market lots of dip opportunities to keep buying and keep adding. So there's lots of things to look for when you're looking at this SMI. It doesn't always crater, it will eventually, as it did here, but it could run in the over bought area, which is above this red line, for quite some time. So 10 minutes and 31 seconds, a bit too much. Let me go to tip ranks now and take a look at the analyst uh, who was talking about Apple today. And that was a Citigroup, Jim Suva of Citigroup, who has a target of 300. So it's not the highest because he was outdone by Wedbush. I think that's the one who published first of 350 and Piper Jaffrey of 305. And there's another one here of 325. So Apple, um, go ahead and buy more vertical calls on this stock. It's just a beast. And these are four and five star analysts. Let's look at Michael Olson, a five star analyst. He's number 58 out of almost 6,000 analysts. And on Apple, um, he's maintained his rating. He's done. He's rated it for 47 times. So he pretty much knows the stock. And let's just see how successful he's been with Apple. His success rate on all of his calls has been 91%, and he's made 28% profit in the t in the in this time here since 2017 to now. So overall, he's a 66% success rate with a 20% return on a one-year average with no benchmark. But you have to benchmark people against the S&P 500, and he's up 7%. Not terrific, but he's right 54% of the time. Let's take a look at the other analysts um, that weighed in today at uh, Wedbush and Citigroup. And why are we not backing up? Let's just go back here. Apple. Let's take this guy, Citigroup. He's a four and a half star, five hours ago, um, $300 target. Uh, he's rated it 68 times. He's saying it's a buy. He's maintaining his buy. He's been a buy all along. Even when it pulled back, it was a buy. He's been a bull on Apple. He's up 10.6%, 70% success on 31 of his 44 ratings were successful. That means he might have said buy here and it dropped. So that's not a successful call according to, uh, to tip ranks. Buy here, that's not a successful call because it dropped a couple of times. Buy here and there. So those were times when he was wrong. Um, but he's not a short-term thinker. Clearly, he's a longer-term thinker. And he's only averaging 1.6 against the S&P 500 for one year. And over two years, he's 4%. Um, he's number 433, so not up there with the other guy. But that's what... Um, uh, tip ranks is good for before you see a you jump on a sell rating or a buy rating look at the analyst find out a bit more about what they do what they're good at and uh, what other stocks they um, they recommend